What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Bear here, and in today's Hobby Hump Day tutorial, we're gonna show you how to get that sweet green weapon glow on all your miniatures. Now we've already done this metal, so now it's time to make it pop. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel check out our site spikybits.com for all the hot hobby tutorials news rumors on all your favorite hobby topics and head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access videos and more become a veteran of the long war today I think when it comes to actually painting up miniatures Half the part is making it pop and making the stuff you're painting contrast and you really can't, there really isn't, I, I don't have a better example for you all than the stuff we've done recently with these Necron Destroyers here because metal is metal. It's kind of boring, let's face it. With my Grey Knights, I spruce it up with a little bit of blue and a little bit of a uh, lightning pizzazz here and there. And with these, just making them pop with this green glow uh, really puts it over the top and will get people to notice it from you know three to four feet away on the battle on the battlefield on the tabletop and it you know it gives your your army a nice uniform glow I feel like plus you can use that same recipe to do stuff like Nurgle and greater demons you know um, any of that stuff out there that requires a green this might be a little too much for salamanders but you can kind of get the uh, the basic the basic recipe and kind of tweak it maybe a little darker uh, to get something like that or obviously darker to do dark angels but these are the tools to add to your hobby tool chest and help make your miniatures pop on the battlefield okay so today's project is going to be sponsored by well not really but today we're going to be using p3 paints a quality product uh iosin green and necrotite green and games workshops flats gets flash gets yellow it's a really really bright yellow and it's uh totally worth using here to get that uh top level glow effect that you're going to need which you can see right there in the middle and all the hyper highlighted edges there it's it's pretty dope so first up, obviously, iOS and Green uh, from P3. It's a really great, uh, amazing base green there. Now, first off, when you're gonna basically uh, slather it onto an area, um, such as right there, you can see on the barrel, <laughs> as, as I flick away a cat hair, I just went in there with a brush and just kind of painted it on. So I didn't have to do quite as much work because I knew that whole area was gonna get covered by it and then there was gonna be over like overwash um that would turn into the glow so i wanted to get in there and i wanted to hit it nice and good and get a really solid base coat before i did all you know the the over effect with uh, the airbrush itself which would serve to be you know kind of a little bit of the source highlighting so i'm just going to mix a little bit up you can you can check out some other videos on that kenny over at next level painting has some great ones about how to you know basically set up your airbrush Get your gangster gumbo in there with your Vallejo flow improver. And then here you can see I'm just hitting it, just starting starting the process, starting the overspray where I'm basically aiming at the middle and it's just kind of going everywhere. And now I'm going to the back where the power cells are. I'm gonna get in there good, but it's still, you see, it's, it, it's going over onto the rear of the model, which is okay because I want that glow back there. It's getting up underneath in the armpit area of the Necron itself. You know, it's getting all these great areas and then I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna specifically hit on the little waist area right there that you can see. I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna angle it. I'm gonna get in there real tight and just kinda get it so it looks like it's kinda glowing up into the rib cage. And of course you gotta hit the face as well. So I'm gonna get in there and give it a give it a quick little blast. I don't wanna get anything too crazy because his eyes are gonna be glowing and stuff, but I don't want it to be too obnoxious that it overshadows the whole piece. And now I'm checking all my angles and just making sure that I didn't miss any spots. You know, you wanna go 360, make sure you get everything a nice good base coat wherever the light would be overshining, and there it is. So the second part is gonna be getting that Necrotite green, which is a, a, a step up, just a little bit, but now we get to aim towards the middle, towards the very middle of all of these areas, and we're gonna be very precise with it because we want to come back with just a little bit of the yellow at the very end of that flash gets. So I want to mix up a little bit of this uh, this necrotite. I'm going to spray it on there. You can spray it on your glove, wherever you want to go. Just make sure you got a good 
mix ready to go and there it is I'm aiming right at the middle and I'm kind of doing this thing where I, where I kind of overspray up over to the top of the weapon which I really kind of gives it that that really cool pop glow and just doing the same process I did before then I jump to the back I hit the power cells and you can see right there it's it's over splashing it's giving that weapon glow effect already very natural um, as I'm basically hitting the areas that I want and this is why it's so official to start with that really good base coat with the brush on those on the tube right there so I don't get some any unnecessary overspray everywhere and there it is aiming towards the middle you can see there I'm tightening up the necrotite I'm getting it in there um, really checking my angles I'm gonna get right up under that rib cage you can see at the bottom of the screen then I'm gonna hit the face a little bit just just a little bit right I'm aiming right towards the middle and you can see there kind of nailed it pretty good really happy with that checking all the angles again um, and that's a wrap so now we're gonna jump over to the flash kits which again an amazing color from Games Workshop this is the normal one so we're gonna mix it a little thin again check some of those other videos out here on this channel for setting up your airbrush over at next level painting uh, for you know all the the hobby hacks of so basically the pre airbrush steps so now it's gonna be very very light controlled burst with this yellow um, I wanna make sure it's flowing good it looks like it's flowing good and I'm aiming right at the middle like the very 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 middle very far distance away I don't wanna get it like too obnoxiously ridiculous but I wanna get that nice subtle fade right there you can see it I'm working it in there it is it looks great and then we're just gonna repeat the whole process just aiming towards the middle and the tops of everything right here in the back area right there we're getting the, the, the very back tip of that power coupling like up over that middle ridge you can see it's separated from the top and the bottom kind of axially then we're gonna go in and on the on the side here I'm gonna hit that very middle and kind of like splash it up over the top a little bit so it gets that um, kind of wrap around glow there as you can look straight down the barrel you can see that effect and I'm getting up over the ribs now um, very very subtle very very controlled burst here and and the face as well and I'm checking it all it all looks great the fading looking good um, didn't miss any spots didn't, didn't go anything bad there so now the trick is we have to go in with a brush all that time we save to make this effect there's the one that's already finished you can see everything is lined already which gives it that great hyper highlight look so we're gonna grab our flash gets yellow um, our model that we're gonna work on that we've just been working on you know every let everything dry you want to get everything nice nice and dry you can hit it with some uh, sealer you know some lusterless testers model masters is pretty good and I'm gonna get basically the edge of the brush we're gonna do some work with this now I'm getting in here and I'm looking at it and the very first a uh, line is usually the toughest one because you want to get a good angle of attack and the thing with this is you always want to be pulling the brush towards you so move the model not the brush and there I went I didn't like that so it's watered down paint because it's basically airbrush paint at this point uh, as I've mixed it up so I can really kind of dab it away with my with my finger you know no harm no foul so I'm gonna I'm gonna get in there I'm gonna mash down the brush a little bit more and I'm going to show you that technique here about midway through of how to set up your brush. And I'm just hitting the edge. I'm, I'm just basically dragging the brush right over the edge. It's almost like cheating, but it's taking the time, you know, to get in there and do it and really do the work. So there it is. That's the very first line. So now I'm going to get in here. I'm going to attack all these other lines, just basically dragging the, the edge of the brush over all of these very sharp edges to create that really really stark contrast that it really pops here so I'm just basically gonna twist the model it's very important that you move the model and not your brush you always want to be pulling towards you and not otherwise so you can maintain that that really fine control this is something you really need to concentrate on that's why I left pretty much the whole um, hyper highlight video segment in here it's this is going to be about three minutes of me just doing this because i want to show you how important this step really is you see a lot of people they'll just basically airbrush their stuff and it's great it's a great time saver and it looks amazing and if you do the contrast right you know it's it's great and you can just boom put it right on the tabletop for a tournament you know if you don't have time to come back and hyper highlight everything because this takes a lot of time i have i have moved this up um to 
uh it looks like uh, this is actually just going no this is double speed so i've moved this up to double speed and it, it's still almost six minutes long just for this particular color and this particular um model right here and you know i'm talking i think i did nine of these models so you're talking with no breaks roughly at least an hour an hour and a half of just getting in here with the brush which you know is about another extra quarter of the time so you're investing some of that time you saved by airbrushing back into here by doing this hyper highlighting and getting taking your model to the next level like detail wise because the contrast of this green really seems to pop when you go back in here and you hyper highlight everything and you'll see a couple spots in here before we get to the, the little uh, cut in this where I should where I show you basically how to set up your brush to do this the easy way you'll see basically a couple of um, places where I even just go almost on the metal with this yellow because you can almost pull it off here like as I go over the, the little thigh bone the thigh hip bone there and I start getting into the actual ribs themselves here and I mean you can tell like this is going kind of fast obviously because it's sped up at, at double speed right but also because I am not I'm not using the point of the brush. I'm using the edge of the brush to really get in there and I'm working the angles. I'm, I'm turning it upside down, you know, so I can get that nice raised edge on those rib, um, those rib cavities there that are already shaded, you know, from our uh, how to paint metal tutorial from a couple of weeks ago. And I'm really getting in there and I'm working these angles um, <laughs> right here. I kind of pulled it a little too close to me because this is, it's a very, um, I guess uh, focus you got to be very hyper focused in here working on this stuff because you want it to look good and if you if you screw up you have like this this very small window to get in there with your finger because like I said it is a watered down paint or you know almost to the airbrush consistency and get in there and, and fix it so we're getting in there we're getting all the the edges we can on the face being very careful to not get too blocky like there I was too blocky so I just basically took my finger just tightened it up yep there it is nope didn't like that <laughs> that's what's so cool about this let me get in here let me not waste time or not try to like take the easy way out and get in here at the right angle that was an direct example of not doing things at the right angle you want to pull towards you not away from you so you have that better control so always twist the model not the brush right there especially on faces people always notice it when you screw up a face right i saw something else i wanted right there on that metal um almost on the border between that gold and that green it really started to get in there and make it all pop you can see it's really starting to work now i need to go back on here but my brush is about dead so i wanted to show you i'm taking basically some of this airbrush paint and then i'm splotching it down kind of mashing the brush down it's not hurting the brush but i'm basically getting loading it with paint and then twisting it to make that really fine tight compressed um basically paint wedge almost with this liner brush right here and then it just you saw it, it lasted that was one load of paint just to get to this point almost um real time i guess it was probably about 12 minutes you know double time here was about six minutes but you can kind of see what i'm what i'm saying here if you work if you build this hobby arsenal with these little tricks using the edges loading the paint on your brush like this you know twisting the model and not the brush so you're always pulling towards you and maintaining that control you can really cut your paint times down and also using your finger as an eraser <laughs> um, you can really do a lot of good uh, good things here and at a really good pace of time because you know for a lot of commission painting it's all about time but for a lot of us too I feel like we got families you know we got things going on we want you know get these models on the table so time is of the essence for everybody you know um so it's all about using this these techniques that are in your hobby arsenal getting in here and doing the work now i just rinsed out my brush i'm checking to see if i missed any spots make sure there's no paint smudges it's looking good it's looking really good so i am satisfied with this so now we're going to go to the next step which is basically throwing a glaze on it and a glaze is just basically a watered down acrylic paint we're going to use secret weapon minis fallout um wash which it's actually a wash but he uses his washes are actually watered on acrylic paint as well i believe um there was a whole thing on how he makes them i forget exactly but it's, it's pretty dope they're totally worth it check them out um so we're gonna water it down just a little bit more and we're gonna use 
these these war games uh, war game painter or army painter rather wedge brushes I love using these things for washes and for glazes we're just gonna get in there we're just gonna load it down but spread it out um, and it, it gets a little bubbly and bubbles are okay as long as you keep an eye on them because you don't want them to basically turn into like dried out seashells all over your stuff so you want to make sure you're not getting too many bubbles but you want to go back and kind of dab them off as we go so I'm gonna get in here I'm just basically showing you how I'm going over a lot of areas I'm even getting on metal that didn't have any green on it because what that's gonna do is when it dries because it's so thin it's gonna help add to that effect of that OSL of basically looking like a glow so I wasn't able to do it with the airbrush but what I can do is because it's so thin down I'm basically pouring you know I'm gonna get it all over those metal areas especially up there over the barrel and it's gonna be dope because I'm gonna get in there and it's basically like creating a false shade that tapers off from the end of the airbrushing so right here I'm just working on just getting the um, the actual glaze everywhere now I'm going back I'm getting in all the places it's uh, it's kind of gathered dabbing it out checking it out there it looks looks good from all these angles I'm not seeing anything bad oh let's look back there and the cracks there that looks bad so we're gonna dab that out and man it really came through pretty good so we're gonna let this dry I'm just gonna get a couple other areas here we're probably gonna let this dry then we're gonna come back and examine it here at the end up oh, there it is and you can see it's already really started to work that OSL effect which is so good it's so easy to do and I mean we're not even this is almost real time so you're talking 20 minutes on a model just to give it this glow effect here you can use this for like I said earlier in the introduction for demon princes any different colors some blues some purples anything you want the sky's the limit once you have basically your color selected you can even use it for engine glow on x-wing fighters and stuff like that so you know it's a really good tips uh, techniques for your hobby arsenal in your hobby tool chest deleted scenes bonus content all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached that's not all the longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad free experience to all your favorite videos Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.